Welcome everybody. This is another Speech with Susan video to work on swallowing, breath support, uh, voice, strength of the voice, cognition, and oral motor. So uh, working on those areas, we'll be doing a few exercises. I'll stop the video so that you can continue doing more so that we're not spending the time uh, in silence. But uh, let's get started. This is um, uh, in November and I'm taping this for a December video. I am in Costa Rica. I'm living here in Costa Rica. Right now it's quite windy outside and so you just hear a lot of wind and maybe wouldn't hear me. So I'm coming to you from Costa Rica. Let's get started. The first exercise that we do is a breath support exercise to, uh, which is your, your breath, your lungs are your, the energy source for your voice, for your strength of your voice and your loudness. So what we wanna do is do an ah sound and hold it for 20 seconds. So if you take a big deep breath, here we go. Ah. Great. Now, if you could stop the video and do it about four or five more times, it's a very good exercise for strength of voice. Okay, welcome back. Next, what we're doing is a high-pitched E sound. We'll do it about five times and we'll hold it for three to five seconds. The purpose of this is it brings the larynx up and which needs to do when you're swallowing or when you're uh, having a inflections in your pitch or in your speech. It's the melodic intonations that uh, we use when we're speaking. It is, the purpose of this is to um, reduce the um, mono voice that we have, monotone that we usually have when Parkinson's progresses. So we want to do these exercises to try to reduce the um, symptoms or the, the effects of what Parkinson's does to our voice. So let's do a high pitched E. We'll do it about five times. We'll hold the E for about three to five seconds, one right after another. So take a big deep breath here. Again, 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 one more time. Now you can pause the video and do it a few more times. It's very important to get that larynx up and it tilts a little bit forward, which uh, thins out the vocal cords, giving you the higher pitch. Okay, welcome back after doing that, a few extras. Next on the list is for swallowing. We do two exercises uh, in my class on Thursdays, and one is called the Masako. That's where you're sticking your tongue between your teeth and your lips, and you're swallowing. And what happens is normally in a swallow, the tongue goes back towards the, the wall. The, when you're looking in someone's mouth, you see a wall back there. It goes towards the wall. That wall comes forward and they have to meet and by doing by doing that that's part of the valving system of a swallow and so uh, what we're doing is we're moving the tongue forward so that wall has to work harder or has to do more have more effort to touch the back of the uh, tongue or the base of the tongue so i'm going to stick my tongue out and then swallow idea is if you can do about three to five of them. It's not easy do, doing a swallow one right after another, but with, in this case, uh, what you wanna do is do it about five times. And uh, a good exercise is getting it a little bit further out and swallowing. Okay, stop the video and try that about five times. You may need to have it, take a sip of water, swallow normally, and then you'll have some residuals in your mouth that you can finish the rest of it. Okay. All right, I'm sure you've done five of those. And let's do the Mendelssohn. The Mendelssohn is a normal swallow. And with a normal swallow, uh, you're just, you're, your lips have to be closed, but um, it's, your larynx goes up and then goes down. And during that time of a normal swallow, there, here's your airway and there is a, a valve, uh, or your epiglottis, which flips over and covers the airway. Airway is completely closed off, you can't breathe. But when we're doing this, we're holding that, um, 
that valve down. There is a little bone here that's right a little higher up. It goes up and towards the chin, and that helps flip the epiglottis over, covering the airway. And so it's very important uh, exercise to make sure that that valve is in very good um, working order so that we're not aspirating. So it'll be a swallow. If you watch me, you're gonna see a little bit of strain on my face when I do a swallow, but I'm stopping in the middle of the swallow, holding it for about three to five seconds and then releasing. And when I'm releasing, that's when I'm exhaling because I've held that air in my lungs. So watch. and then release. You, what you're doing is you're trying to work on making sure that that uh, epiglottis flips over, covers the airway. And let's stop the video and try and do that about four or five times. All right, I bet you did that. Welcome back and let's do some diaphragmatic breathing. So in this exercise, we are controlling the exhalation of our breath. We were doing the ah sound and controlling it with our vocal cords because the vocal cords were doing an ah sound. They were coming together. Here the vocal cords are open, but the airflow is coming out, but we're trying to make sure that the airflow lasts about eight seconds or a count of eight. So you're inhaling through the nose for a count of three, exhaling through the nose for a count of eight. So inhale, two, three, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great, we did that a few times. Let's do the next one. I'm gonna explain it to you, then you stop the video and practice it because it takes up two and a half minutes just to do it and it's one that we do like one time, but it's best to do it more. But what you're doing is you're puckering your lips you're contracting the obliquus oris muscle, you're stretching the buccinator muscle, and you're holding it for 60 seconds with the last 10 seconds pulling tighter because as the minute goes, you're, there's a little bit of a release in the tension, and then you're pulling it at the last 10 seconds, uh, a nice tight uh, squeeze. Then automatically you switch to a smile, lips have to be sealed, buccinators are contracting, the obliquus oris muscles are uh, extending and you need to kind of focus on that sensation of these muscles just um, re releasing and that, and then these contracting and you're smiling for 60 seconds keeping the lips sealed because that's very important that is uh, to help maintain labial seal because what happens with Parkinson's as it progresses there's there begins to be pooling of saliva in the mouth and we're not swallowing as normal as, as often as we normally do. You lose a little bit of sensation and then you start to drool. Um, many years ago, I've had plenty, I've had Parkinson's patients for the last 40 years, but 40 years ago, I would see a lot more drooling, but now they have medications that uh, help clear up the saliva and you don't produce as much saliva, but the saliva is very important because it contains enzymes that help break down the food in the stomach. So we, if we can manage our saliva and swallow and keep it um, clear, our mouth clear of pooling of the saliva, then likely you won't be drooling. So with this one, uh, with that exercise with a pucker and smile, that's the purpose of it is to uh, maintain labial seal and um, kind of increase the awareness of the, of the saliva in the mouth. Another exercise that we usually do is that we've worked on very interior muscles of the, for swallowing and voice. We kind of uh, also do exercises for the muscles that, are, that support the interior, the um, very smaller muscles. We've got larger muscles around the neck. So we're doing a chin to our right shoulder and we want to drop that left shoulder and we want to hold for about 20 seconds um, 
but we're gonna hold for 10 on this. But when you do this on your own, try to hold for about 20 seconds. So you wanna feel a stretch on this left side. Then you turn your chin to the left side and you should feel a stretch on the right side of your neck. And that's the muscle that we're uh, focusing on here. Then I wanna do a right ear to right shoulder, drop your left shoulder, pull it back, chin to two o'clock position. And what you're gonna feel is a stretch all the way down here, all the way through here to this left shoulder. And you hold for about 20 seconds. Then let's do left ear to left shoulder, drop your right, pull it back, chin to 10 o'clock position. So it's a nice stretch from chin to the shoulder. And then the last one is just chin to chest and you're stretching the muscles on either side of the cervical spine. Okay, so those are the exercises that are very good to do every day. And there was another exercise for swallowing and it's, a, it's one that I can't show you, but it's what you do is you lay firm on a mattress or the floor um, and you just lift your head up, keeping your shoulders on the floor look at your toes and you try to hold it for 60 seconds. Very difficult to do, but you want to work out. But it is another exercise for swallowing and it just works those um, muscles that support the swallowing muscles. And then it also, because you've got your, your head up over these muscles up here are also be, being engaged. All right, so the last thing that I usually do with everybody is um, a little bit of cognition and it's just something kind of where I give, give you a a clue and you, uh, I give you a little bit of time to come up with the answer. So this is called where, the, where are the suburbs? So I'm gonna give you some suburbs and let's see if you know what city they belong to. So if I go Yonkers, Hoboken, and New Rochelle, where would that be? That'd be in New York City. All right, let's do the next one. Halaya, Homestead, and Coral Gables or Hialeah, I bet it's pronounced that. Hialeah, Homestead, Coral Gables. That is Miami. Let's do the next. Torrance, Redondo Beach, and Pasadena. Los Angeles. Some of these are really clear that where you might, you might know the state, but it might be a little more difficult knowing the city. Okay, Newton, Quincy, and Brookline. That's Boston. All right. Daly City, Sausalito, Mill Valley. San Francisco. How about this one? Bethesda, Arlington, Alexandria. Washington, D.C. Cicero, Skokie, and Elgin. Chicago, Slidell, Gulfport, Bay of St. Louis, New Orleans. Let's do the next one. I bet you can get these. Katy, Sugarland, Galveston. That's Houston, of course. Number 10, let's do this one. Golden, Aurora, and Boulder. Denver. Last one, Camden, Brown Mar, and Bluebell. Philadelphia. Great. Y'all did a good job. Practice these exercises. I think they should be done every day. It's a, quite important. But also go to hapsonline.org and look for other videos and classes. We meet, uh, my speech class, we meet through Zoom. I'm doing it from Costa Rica and we have a class on Thursdays from 10.30 to 11.30. There's yoga, there is um, uh, physical therapy, there's uh, some more speech therapy classes, there's Tai Chi, there's some wonderful classes, great instructors, a lot of good resources um, that, uh, that you can read. And they do have in-person classes and meetings, and that would be good if you can attend those as well. 
but haps online and see look at the other videos speech videos that i've made and like them so that uh, we know that they're useful uh, or that they are being seen that we we got we can continue doing that y'all take care and you'll get another video from me from costa rica bye